Absolutely. Yeah. BTC sessions, you, you kind of drill into uh, what I think is like a really interesting part of all of this, which is ultimately all of us are all kind of narrative crafters. You know, we're trying to get the message across and we're in this just ridiculous uh, situation right now where the narrative couldn't be more clear uh, to the average person about really what we're dealing with, what we're up against, how the system is broken, and that there might be a way out. Uh, I'm curious to hear from Coin Icarus and, and Kiss Bitcoin a little bit uh, because we haven't heard enough from you guys. Uh, how do you see the the narrative? You know, how are you explaining it? Uh, how do you see it growing from here? Uh, you know, wh where do you kind of see yourself interacting with it, and what do you see kind of ultimately this opportunity as a as a YouTuber? Um. Okay, I guess I'll, uh, I'll I'll kick it off. That that's multi that, that's like multi-parted question. I, oh, I yeah. I'm I'm gonna desperately try to answer all of it, but it'll probably just come out like a jumble. But okay, so uh, all right, like there's you know obviously there's a whole bunch of different elements, right? That that we're that that we're trying to balance. Um, at the end of the day, you know the, the the narrative for me is really just about people. Like, look, I I'm of the uh, you know the the small minority that I guess came to Bitcoin for medium of exchange. Um, I I knew that the money was broken when I was a kid, but I immediately understood that my only way out was to find some way to produce it while I'm not working, um, or you know stock up on gold and metal and you know own some type of property or business that creates money for you because immediately I understood that the, the money was broken. So um, for me, you know, I, I came to it from a medium of exchange. And for me, the narrative is really about opting out. And it is about like when, you know, that, that, that meme, right? The, uh, the, the matrix, uh, sorry, the, uh, the Neo and Morpheus meme, you know, like once you opt, like once you opt out, like, you know, when, when do I trade my, you know, my Bitcoin back into fiat? Well, the point is when this, you know, if this works, you shouldn't have to. And like, that's exactly the point. Like I, you know, for me, it's like, I, I shouldn't have to opt out. I should be able to stay and, you know, transact in the ecosystem. So, I, I mean, I guess like, you know, where, where do I intend, you know, in going with, with all of this? I just intend to produce Bitcoin only content that, you know, I think is going to help people steer away from the bullshit, the stuff that I got scammed by because I believed in the, the better tech narrative, you know, like that's something easy that people fall into. And, um, you know, th this is how they fall for a lot of these scams because a lot of these things don't actually require a token to perform the function that they're performing, you know, but yet there's a white paper around it. There's a team, there's a whole bunch of, you know, there's a nice big bow around the shit. So it, it looks pretty. Um, but yeah. So at the end of the day, I'm just there to produce the, you know, the Bitcoin only content. And I think that for me, the narrative is, is that currently when I bring, when, when I talk to people, it, it doesn't even really have to do with Bitcoin. It has to do with the broken money, but optimally um, if they go down the crazy rabbit hole with me, they're going to get to the point where I tell them that they shouldn't have to opt out and that they should be able to exist in this ecosystem permanently at some point. So that's what I got. <laughs> awesome. Kiss, awesome. You, you've you been showing people how to exist in the ecosystem. Why don't you chime in? Like, yeah. how, you know, how, how's the circular economy growing and how easy is that to do? Also, uh, we've all been Bitcoin a bunch, so make sure you get another uh, drink. Um, so on my to-do list, actually, um, you know, I want to write an article about uh, exactly what kind of this, because, uh, you know, the reason that I have this, this beautiful two-piece suit on is because I care about my privacy and, and because, you know, I like being able to hide in the crowd. But more than anything, it's I want to show people, and this is what I, kind of one of the reasons why I started my, my whole, you know, channel. You can, Bitcoin allows you to, 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 to thrive without having to corrupt yourself by, you know, giving in to, to, to the, the structures of this system, right? You don't have to compromise everything, have everything out there just to be able to make a living. Um, Bitcoin allows you to create something and get compensated for it without having to compromise 
your identity, if you choose, your, your security, um, everything in the KYC world is, is so onerous and it's becoming way worse, way worse. And so I want to show people it's possible. Like we're in the new world. You just kind of have to like wake up and realize where you are and start moving forward in it. Um, and as platforms start to see how profitable this can be, and I don't know how they're going to see that, but as it happens, I think as numbers go up, something will happen. Uh, um, their greed, right, will propel this forward. Um, the the beauty of the the design of Bitcoin is that it leverages the the greed um, in society. I don't think everybody is greedy. I think there's a group of people that thrive on uh, on that 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 need to to suck on you know the the life the the consciousness they, they need you to to be a debt slave in order for them to thrive there's a there's a small you know the one percent whatever they are they, they thrive off of that and their system will collapse when people say no I'm not going to participate in this Bitcoin doesn't fix inequality of wealth in fact it may make it worse but what it does fix is it gives people a fair shake. It, it says, look, this is exactly how it is. This is what it is. And how are you going to participate in it? And it's not a, a bait and switch. Fiat money is a bait and switch. The, the loss in purchasing power over the last hundred years is completely fucking over such a large percentage of the population globally because you know the dollar everything is basically in dollars right dollars the the safe currency um and the majority of the, the planet's population is being is being you know then parasitically eaten by a small portion of the population that's because of the fiat money and that's because of the the structures that are in place so this stupid costume i'm showing you guys look you can do this, you can step into this and you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. Yes, you still have to pay your taxes. Taxes are a voluntary reporting of your income. I'm not going to go too far down that rabbit hole, but I'm comfortable talking about it because I'm not worried I'm going to get a fucking IRS letter in the mail, not at least right away. But, you know, these different things, OPSEC and all these things matter uh, for so many different reasons. But like anybody can do it, you can start a website, right? And my article is going to be how to start a website, how to, you know, I'm working on a BTC pay a video right now. All of these, these things you can do without KYC and you can start earning money without any KYC. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. Yes, you still have to pay your taxes, but you can report income without divulging your UTXO set. They don't give a shit yet. I mean, I think the, the question on the top of the IRS form, it's like the first question is, did, I don't know, did you invest in crypto or whatever, whatever it is? But like, it's like at the very top now because they are scared shitless. I went on a little rant, but that's what happens an hour into. I, I want to jump into that. I basically want to say that every single one of us on this fucking show is totally fucked other than KIS Bitcoin. <laughs> A hundred percent. Facts. Well, like Max like Fires, so fucked. Fact. Max Fires is Bitcoin rich. So he's going to be the like the big money bag that like helps <laughs> funnel. Max, funnel you need to direct, let me, let me you follow up on that. direct so, the regulation, you know, please. The, the thing about it is that um, Bitcoin is acting as a bit of a fifth column inside the U.S. government because there are Bitcoiners now inside the U.S. government. And as we con get to a confrontation with the US government, because remember the, the biggest loser in the global finance grid is gonna be the dollar. As somebody mentioned in countries like Argentina, Venezuela, Iran, they understand Bitcoin immediately because they need to. It's just a necessity. They don't haggle about 
you know, shit coins or, you know, personalities. They're like, I need it. I, and they, they, their learning curve is instantaneous because it makes perfect sense and they get it. Who's the biggest loser in the global currency game? It's going to have to be the US dollar, which has been the world reserve currency for 100 years. So as we head into this now, there's going to be, it's a, we love the fact that we have this coin, this Bitcoin, and it's deflationary and it's competing against the US dollar. But the collapse of the US dollar is going to cause a lot of social unrest. We already see it you know, in, in all these protests, in all these cities that are on fire. And America is going through a 1970s-like chaotic social unrest, total chaos. And that is all linked back to money printer go burr. And the US dollar is losing its position as world reserve currency. That means, as people have said, inflation, prices are going to go up and more social unrest. So um, that's, that's the downside of victory in the Bitcoin war, is we're going to be living in a society that's on fire. Uh, that's, but that's real. It's as real as it gets. It, 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 those people in Argentina and elsewhere that are seeing their economies get obliterated and you, and you turn on the news and you're like, oh, that's terrible. That's going to be us. And it's, and it's coming. It's coming quick. And, and, it, and, and does it have to be that way? Yeah, it does. Because I, I think so. Because the dollar is being printed into oblivion and it's causing this extinction event. The, the, the Fed is, is printed more in the last three months than they've printed in 50 years. They, they're absolutely out of control. And the, the chaos unfolding is, is, and you're heading into this election, which is gonna be crazy for a lot of different reasons. One of which will be, they probably won't even be able to how to figure out how to count the votes. That basic vote counting part of the election looks like it's gonna be severely challenged. So now you've got all those elements coming together and okay, we've got this winning coin. I mean, Bitcoin could go, you know, price go up. I mean, during this chaotic election, you could see that $50,000 price because the dollar is going to be in severe jeopardy. But the problem is, as Americans, we're, we're going to be living in a very uh, hot situation, particularly in the cities. You know, people who have wealth are bought, are, are got that second passport. They got that third passport. They can go to the airport hop on a jet and get the fuck out of here. And that's what's going to happen in November. And you already see it happening. The, uh, the president of Barbados said recently that the number of people that are just moving there for the election from America is rising quite sharply. So that, that group of folks are going to be taken care of because they're going to leave. So now we're going to be here fighting. Uh, and it's going to be pretty chaotic. So that's the... And as Americans, you know, we, we, we feel this in a way where we want Bitcoin to succeed, but for Bitcoin to ultimately succeed, the dollar has to fail. And that's something that as Americans, that means our empire that's been a hundred years in the making, all that World War II victory and all that technological premise, the supremacy is, is gotta, is gotta fail ultimately for this to win, but it's gotta be. And, and that's where it's going to get tough. And that's where the battle lines are going to be drawn. And that's where people, you know, KYC it, it, with weaponized KYC, KYC on steroids, they're not going to fool around. So I, I, we got to brace ourselves for, I think, uh, tough times. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're seeing it now. I mean, they're already weaponizing the KYC. Uh, it's, it's really, it's the last thing. I mean, I came into Bitcoin you can buy with no KYC so easily. I mean, it was such a beautiful, graceful thing. And the last three years, all you have left, I mean, in the US at least, all you have left is, is BISC. There's nothing else unless you're willing to go meet someone on the street and that comes with its own problems. Um, it's, it's completely gone. It's like, it's, it's almost like they've already usurped the you know the the and the last way to anonymously obtain bitcoin aside from a physical transaction is mining it and that's difficult for a lot of people you know i mean that's that's an expensive difficult thing um so one out like one element of like the war already has been going on 
most people don't want to look, don't want to like see, see the, the reality of the situation. The war has been waged and it, it's in your face. If you know, if you look, look for it, it's right there. Right. So to finish everywhere. off on that, uh, what I was saying about the fifth column is, in other words, if enough people in government are are holding uh, Bitcoin, they become allies. So we need we need people in government and high levels in places in government to become Bitcoiners. So I mean, whenever I get a chance to, to talk to anybody in government, it's always about pr bracing for this because we want we want to change the laws. He who has the Bitcoin makes the laws, and you can get laws. Laws are bought. In the United States, that's how laws come into existence. They're paid for. So in fact, as dollar paid crashes, for. and we've got the only hard currency, we're going to say, "Hey, you know what, uh, Mr. Senator, uh, we'll support your reelection, but you've got to change this KYC law." And I think that's a viable alternative for the Bitcoin communities. We're going to buy our way out of this restriction, but and we have the greatest ally on our behalf is the dollar is going to crash. We'll have the only hard currency. Right. So we now we've got agency to be like the, the dollar is crashing. You've got the gold bugs and they've got gold, you know, but there's a lot of that's centralized and it's just surrounded by police and army and it's hard to store gold. Gold is not practical. And then, OK, and then there's an army of Bitcoiners who are now sitting on a trillion dollars worth of Bitcoin or more. And uh, they're like, uh, you know, help us. We'll be like, yeah, we'll help you <laughs> be to change the law first and then we'll help you. Peter Schiff in disbelief. <laughs> well so, you know he he's just uh he's been able he's the best marketer in bitcoin is peter schiff yeah a hundred percent he's I, the only one who understands marketing <laughs> in the bitcoin space is peter schiff and he hates yeah. bitcoin and he, well, and he and he bashes bitcoin he's the only one that's actually been beneficed he's benefited from a marketing perspective his gold business has benefited more than any bitcoin business has been hurt by his Bitcoin bashing and by any Bitcoin business able to publicize itself, except for maybe Barry Silbert, who does seem to understand marketing. I am I'm super bullish on Peter Schiff's son, Spencer Schiff, who has just doubled down on his oh Bitcoin God. bet. And okay, I challenge, if, if he sees this, if he's watching this, Spencer Schiff, come on, man, you gotta do this. So there, there is Schiff Gold, you gotta start shift sats. There's no <laughs> way you can't start shift sats. What if you don't start shift sats? What are you doing with your life? I'm sure it'll now, happen, I, but you know what? That's great marketing. <laughs> I mean, look, Peter Schiff yeah. is a, is a genius marketer, and he, he, this this teeing up of his son as my rivalry with my son, the Bitcoiner, is mm, marketing oh, yeah. genius. And and he, they the should do shift sets, and they probably will do shift sets. And oh, yeah. um, but again, that came out of the gold community. You know, the Bitcoin community is still like not marketing to get back to Dan Held's pyramid thing. Oh, wait, yeah. uh, let's let, let's criticize that a little bit more because that's what we're supposed to be doing, right? We're supposed to be marketing. Like right back at you, like Max. What what's your biggest gripe with the current state of Bitcoin marketing? Well, like I said at the beginning, I, it's a question that comes up all the time. And Bitcoin is decentralized, which is greatest strength, but there's no way to hire a publicist. And the world works on publicists. When you say, oh, you know, my video has clickbait because that's the state of the industry, that's correct. The state of the industry everywhere is publicists. Publicists make the world go around. And um, everybody, and, and we don't have them. So we don't, so we, we very quickly are defined by the worst of us because the worst of us gets the, the worst trolls and the worst scumbags get way too much attention because there's no counter story being professionally presented and, and hitting the media in a barraged way. Okay. Now that's slowly, the only people, like I said before, pomp and Melton Demirers are the first two people I've seen that are actually on that professional level, like Pop is just like a mercenary. He just, he doesn't do any bullshit, does he? He's just like, boom, 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 boom. And you know, that's, we need more pumps. <laughs>